So first of all, yeah, we are live. And uh, yesterday, someone sent me a comment. He said that the chiddush that we said from the Kli Yaakov, that the mistake Moshe Rabbeinu made was sending men instead of women, it did shock the uh, WhatsApp world. But he said that this chiddush I heard from my wife right when I got married. <laughs> that was number one. And he said, what's Pshat? He said, because women, as we know, are more intuitive. That's number one. And like Chazal say, Chazal already oimed in the fact that they went to Chulda and Via because she was more of a Rachmonis. She has more compassion. He said, but look at this world today, is that the president, presidential candidates, Lav Davka, are living up to these two characteristics, Rachmonis and uh, intuitive. I don't mean to say Lashon Hara about any candidates because I'm about to speak about Hilchus Lashon Hara and even though it's about a non-Jew, Avel Piken, the reason why I would say anything is just to learn. My wife pointed that she said, look at Mamish, you should take a look at a, a lady that's about to be possibly the President of the United States and to look, does she have the Midas of, uh, that we're looking for in, uh, in an Isha, Rachmanus, Intuitive, Emes Kite. Anyway, Da'ay L'Chakim Averumiza. Okay. Now, Hilchas Lashon Hara is something definitely that we could focus on this week. It's, it's absolutely fascinating how many tefillahs we make and we dive in and how many times we ask, and rightfully so, we should be surprised. They say from Abner Chwam and Zechavah, they say if a person davens and he does and his tefillah doesn't get accepted, he should be shocked. How many people are shocked when their prayers are not received? Why should we be shocked? Because the Rebbe is our father. He loves us. You go over to your father and you ask for something. And he loves you. He doesn't want to give you. Your kid comes over and says, I want some candy. You don't want to eat. There's a good reason why you're not getting one. He's up to the 25th candy. Fine. The guy's asking for $5 million. Maybe it's not so good for him. But why aren't that feels being accepted? So first of all, there's a Chafetz Chaim. It's so important to chaz over, you know, the old, old Avera, the Lashon Hara, that we thought we already got rid of. Chavetz Chaim says that was the mucker for the sin of Shinnam that Chazal saying for the base of Mikdash should be destroyed is Lashon Hare. Chavetz Chaim. And, and, and if that's true, then that means that the Tikkun, like the Rav Kuk, Zichar Rav Kuk was one that said that, that if the base of Mikdash was destroyed because of sin of Shinnam, so to bring back the base of Mikdash, you have to have Av Shinnam. It's not a Chazal, it's a Kuk. So really what comes out, according to Chavetz Chaim, is how we're going to be misakin the Chet HaMeraglim and the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash that's Al Yedei Dibol Toif If we destroyed it was a negative word and the Dibol Toif is how it's going to fix it and I said something to my Yedid of Yehuda uh, Rav uh, Avi Berg he sent me such a beautiful video there's a famous conductor his name is Benjamin Grasner something like that anyway he's speaking he's giving chizuk to the, to the Oilem first he says you should know my career was changed when I was 45 years old and I suddenly looked at myself and I saw myself as a conductor that moves its wand, I say, I don't say a word. I don't even say a word and look at the effect that I have in an entire symphony. Is that that hit me? How powerful, how powerful just a one movement. We said machshavas, Allah has come of the come of words. And then he ended off the talk is I want to tell you and share with you something that I heard from a survivor of Auschwitz. A lady told me this. She said, I was 15 years old. I'm standing in Auschwitz. I'm standing with my brother who's eight years old. And we're about, we're in line. And I look at him. And I saw that my brother wasn't wearing shoes. It's like a good old sister. Naturally, I started saying, you're not wearing shoes? Come on, you're always, you're always missing your shoes. And then right afterwards, we were pushed ahead. And he went to the right, I went to the left. Basically, I didn't see him ever again. And this lady said, I walked out of Auschwitz into light, and she said, I took on a vow. I said, I couldn't believe the last words that I said to my brother, I'm giving him Muslim about the fact that he's not wearing shoes. So I made a vow that I will never say something to someone that can't stand as the last words that I ever say. And I think about this so many times when I speak to my kid, a person speaks to his kid, his spouse, specifically his spouse and his kid, yeah, everyone else too. And think, if you're saying something right now, and this is going to be the last words that you're going to say to this person, would you say it? It changes everything. I try mamish, every time I speak to my kid, and the kid doesn't know why I'm giving him such a hug, and I love you. A person doesn't know. The last words that you're going to say is going to be Musa. That's the tikkun that we should have this week, and we should be zeichet to be no